Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to be talking about the Prison of Elders from Destiny 1. Dismantle minds, yes. Or... The Prison of Elders released all the way back in 2015 with the House of Wolves DLC and served primarily as the expansion's main endgame activity. Both Vanilla D1 and Dark Below gave us a raid for the endgame activity, but with House of Wolves, Bungie instead replaced that with Prison of Elders, which consisted of various round-based challenges and several unique raid-esque bosses. Not as complex as a raid boss, but definitely a step up from strike bosses. We had around 10 Prison of Elders bosses and about 6 of them with unique and challenging mechanics. And of course the end game boss, Skolas. Skolas was an absolute beast, especially early on before he received some patches. His very high health pool, mixed with the insane amount of adds that did a ridiculous amount of damage as well, made him one of the toughest end game boss fights in the entire Destiny series. Early on, there were all kinds of burn strategies that popped up as one of the most effective ways to take him down, if your team was capable, because doing his fight legitimately took a lot of time and was incredibly challenging. The Prison of Elders granted various endgame weapons and a unique armor set that has been repurposed a few times since, and it also provided you with the most coveted currency at the time, Etheric Light, which allowed you to basically infuse weapons and armor to maximum power level. This meant that all weapons from Vanilla and Dark Below could now be brought forward, which was a really big appeal of this DLC drop, allowing things like Fatebringer and Black Hammer to be brought up to current power level. Now, the Prison of Elders was a bit divisive for a few reasons in the community. Obviously, there was a lot of disappointment that there wouldn't be a raid coming with House of Wolves, despite there being leaks suggesting that there would be, and so some of the disappointment I think comes from that and others found the game mode to grow boring fairly quickly, which I can understand. Both of the arguments I can definitely sympathize with, because they do have some valid points, but I personally found Prison of Elders to be one of the better endgame activities Bungie has brought us in the franchise. While the early rounds of the Prison of Elders played almost the same with just a handful of different modifiers and similar mechanics, the final bosses were actually pretty good across each separate arena challenge. Urox would burn the floor every so often, so you had to constantly stay in the air to avoid damage, Golrot would slow you down and basically leave you immobile if you got caught in his bile. And Quodron was a really well-made boss that feels pretty similar to the Atheon fight from Vault of Glass, having very similar mechanics. And there were a few other bosses as well, like the Wretched Knight who had a ground pound, and Valis Traug that would change elemental shield types every so often. And these bosses, while not outstanding mechanically, at least required some teamwork and a bit more focus than, let's say, strike bosses. The arenas leading up to the fights could also be pretty tough as well, especially if you had Dismantle Mines, yes. Paired with an Arc Burn modifier while inside the Hive Arena. That shit could be pretty dangerous thanks to Wizards and Hive Boomers, and I think even the Thrall melee did Arc damage, so yeah, that shit was brutal. It also helped that the Prison of Elders were match made except for the level 35 Skolas fight, so you didn't always need a full squad of homies to grind for that cool loot. And there was quite a bit of it. Plenty of weapons, a great armor set, and various other endgame currencies. Descending down into the treasure room always had you praying for a god rolled queen themed weapon or the hope of an exotic quest for either the Queen Breaker's Bow, the Dreg's Promise, or the Lord of Wolves. Three exotics that have been proven to be longtime fan favorites. Dropping down into a room filled with gold and various chests just felt so good after a long fought battle. About a year after the release of House of Wolves and several months after the Taken King, the Prison of Elders would receive a pretty big update. The Challenge of the Elders, which was a very Taken-themed version of the event featuring new bosses like Texas, the Betray. They also brought along with them some minor but unique mechanics as well. The big draw of the Challenge of Elders was the scoring card system that rewarded you for your high scores. And Bungie even kept track of the leaderboard they would post each week on their blog of the top scoring teams from each week. The scoring was based on how well you were able to chain points with your team according to modifiers, like maybe there'd be one round in the fight where you gained bonus points from grenade kills, so you tried your best to get as many grenade kills as possible without being too slow that you accidentally started losing points by taking too long. And it wasn't the deepest leaderboard scoring system out there, but it was something, and it was very popular. The weapons that came with the Challenge of the Elders were also much better than the original Prison of Elders weapons like Her Fury and Her Revenge, which were top tier in the Crucible if you had the right roles. And the Prison of Elders and the Challenge of Elders went on to be just a very fun, replayable activity that I think is one of Bungie's best. And I think that the Prison of Elders is a bit underrated. I think it gets a little too much flack, especially at the time. 
And again, I think the disappointment of no raid with House of Wolves may have soured people's perception of the Prison of Elders, but I think that the amount of bosses and the fun, albeit minor mechanics, actually was pretty well done, and again, it remains one of my favorite activities we've ever received. The update with Challenge of Elders was a proper recreation fit for the Taken King's April update that provided just as much replayability, if not more so. But I am curious to hear what you guys think. Did you enjoy the Prison of Elders? Let me know in the comments why you did or why you did not. Also, be sure to check out my video of when I soloed Skolas, which is a pretty fun challenge. I recommend trying if you're looking for something to do on Destiny 1. But with that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more videos. We're pretty close to 30,000 subscribers, so I'd really appreciate it if you dropped a sub. But thanks again for watching, guys. I'll see you all in the next one. Can you tell me your name? Silo the Defiled!